What's up everyone, it's your soul here and I've got you looking at my Facebook page and uh, had a very interesting experience here. As you may know, I've been blocked on Facebook recently for two months from using the normal method of posting to my profile. I've had to find a workaround uh, because they say I'm a Nazi, apparently, uh, which they have no evidence for whatsoever. It's basically nonsense. Um, and they seem to have done that to numerous other people as well who were talking out about science and, and health issues relating to this virus lockdown situation. So someone just basically tweeted out a video, uh, which I found very interesting. I've, I've got a lot of videos on my website connected to vaccine safety, vaccine health, vaccine science, um, usually from doctors and scientists, basically talking. M more often than not, it's, you know that's the kind of level I look for. So when I saw that they were posting this video, I thought, well, that looks interesting. I'll, I'll have a look. And I'm going to play it to you in a moment. But I just want to show you what happened when I tried to share it on Facebook. So um, I made this post, and basically I've added the video to my website, Eureka.org. And then I've got this post on my timeline, which you can see is live. Someone's liked it. And if I tr try and share it to groups, well, what happened, first of all, when I did that, it said, Facebook said, there's been a problem, couldn't share them. And then it said, oh, we think your account's been hacked. Okay, so go through this security system check to make sure you haven't, you know, the account's not been hacked. And I've had that happen before, and it's also in du dubious situations before, but I thought, well, okay, whatever. Completed it. Then I tried to share these, this video again, and I thought, I bet this doesn't work. And yes, it does not work. I was not able to share it. And there's no explanation given. It just says you can't share it. So let's have a look. Share to groups. I'm just going to share it to this one, Community of the Awake. Shared. Oh, there was a problem sharing this post. Please try again later. No explanation. Oh, OK. Can't share it. Um, well, we know that Mark Zuckerberg has publicly stated in US government um, sessions that he intends to limit the ability for people to discuss vaccines. And in this case, and bearing in mind this was his position was, well, vaccines are all safe and effective, so it's dangerous for people to question that. And so we won't, you know, his words were, we basically won't make it easy for people to find content of the nature that questions vaccine safety. He didn't say they would ban it. He just said that they would make groups difficult to um, to discover, which in itself is extremely dodgy. But in this case, it's actually stopping me sharing, full stop. And the reason why this is very troubling to me, and it should be to you, is the nature of the content of this video. So let's just have a look. So before we start, this this basically is a court case. Uh, I don't know all the details of the court case, but it seems to be probably a, a situation where one parent has decided the child should not be vaccinated and, and another one wants the child to be vaccinated, something along those lines. I've seen cases like this before. I've seen a nine-hour case with, I believe it was Dr. Stanley Plotkin as a defendant, or a, an expert witness, rather, where he absolutely incriminated himself, and the, the, the lawyer did a sterling job of showing him up to be basically incompetent and dangerous, in my opinion. I watched all nine hours of that. Uh, this is an eight minute equivalent to that. And this is very eye opening. If you haven't, you know, you don't have time to watch a nine hour video that could change your life and save the lives of children. At least take the time to watch this eight minute video. I have a suggestion. Oh, wonderful. Because it'll be impressive. In so Dr. Teresa Holtrop, president of the Michigan American Academy of Pediatrics. So literally the top end of one state's um, basically key organization for child care. So she's, you know, the top dog in that establishment. So you would think that she would really know all about vaccines. She would be up, you know, on point with um, all the science behind the science-based advice that she gives and the policies that she carries out and rubber stamps. She would know all about that and she would know for sure that what she's saying is correct. I mean, that would only be right, yeah? Well, let's find out. Off. The fact that this child has not gotten any immunizations previously yes. means this poor child will have to be tortured with six different injections at the same time. And if you would like to put those six up at the one visit, at her first visit to get all these immunizations, I'm happy to do that. A child at their six-month shot, they would receive DTAP, correct? Correct. They would receive polio? Correct. Hep B? Correct. Eumococcal? Um, uh, yes. Hib? It depends. It depends on the product that was used in the first two mm -hmm. sessions. Same same issue with catching up a two and a half year old, right? Sa same same choice. Same okay. choice. Yeah, uh, in this case, yes. Um, and I, 
excuse me, at two and a half years of age, you're saying getting six vaccines is torture, but a six month old would have to receive, we just counted one, two, three, four, five vaccines, correct? Um, aluminum adjuvants are using vaccines, correct? Correct. <clears throat> Why are aluminum adjuvants using vaccines? Because they make the vaccine more effective. So he's asking her, basically, is it correct that aluminium, as we would say in England, adjuvants are used in vaccines? And he's asking her why are they used, and she says it makes them more effective. That's a red flag to begin with, because that's a completely unscientific explanation. Even I, as somebody in no way medically professionally trained, basically seems to know more about how this works than she does, because I've spent hours and hours and hours learning about it. Okay, um, and how do they do that? She's like looking at the judge like, oh, who's this cocky idiot? Oh, he thinks he knows what he's talking about. I don't know. Okay. What's an antigen? An so what was that? I don't know. Oh, that's surprising. Let's find out what she didn't know. How do they do that? How do they do that? So he says, when she says aluminum adjuvants make uh, vaccines more effective and useful and make, basically make them work, he's like, well, how does that happen? I don't know. Okay. What's an antigen? An antigen is a, typically a protein that, um, in this case, it would be, if you're talking about vaccines, an antigen is... Um, uh, uh, First of all, I learned about antigens when I was 16 at school, in public school, edu well, just state school edu level education, and she's having trouble <laughs> expressing something that 16-year-olds are expected to understand, but okay. A protein that causes a reaction and oftentimes is a, an infectious agent, but not always. Um, isn't it true that an adjuvant will, only, will uh, not only bind to the target antigen that's in the vaccine, but also uh, to the impurities and byproducts such as the animal and human parts left in the vaccine of the manufacturing process? You're asking me specifics about physiology um, that I am not aware that's not my area of expertise. But um, there is, okay, so you're not aware that there's a difference between the form that aluminum, so when it's ingested, it's taken up in ionic form, when it's injected, it's in these nanoparticle forms. And in contrast, injected aluminum is our nanoparticles, correct? They're there to create an irritant to the immune system so that the, the vaccine creates antibodies. And so they're actually these nanoparticles that are in the vaccine, right? Or do you not know? You're talking about specifics that are, are very detailed. Aren't, and, the, uh -huh. and, Aren't and the details important? I mean, you, you said that- Not in this case, because we're talking about a metal. It is not concerned. <laughs> So I would suggest anybody who wants to know about aluminium adjuvants, I mean, I'm laughing because it's so terrifying and shocking, and I just can't believe that people like this have got into the positions they are without being challenged for so long. But really, this is disgusting. Um, if you go and listen to uh, Professor Chris Exley, who's one of the leading world-leading experts in aluminium, full stop, um, he's done a significant amount of research into aluminium adjuvants now, and he basically wrote a public letter, along with several other doctors at the time, um, key researchers into aluminium, stating that he'd had to publicly change his position on whether or not aluminium was causal in uh, cases of autism uh, due to the research that he had participated in, which showed uh, that uh, basically tiny particles of aluminium were, f were residing within the brain of children who uh, commonly who, who had autism and other similar um, problems later in life or even as children. Uh, and this was based on autopsies. So... She's saying, let's just let's just double check. First of all, bearing in mind what I said, Professor Christopher Exley, uh, one of the leads world, world, world's leading experts in aluminium, says that uh, basically aluminium for vaccines are quite likely cause of autism. And uh, he goes into a lot of detail explaining about the nanoparticles, uh, the fact that they can cross the blood-brain barrier, and why that's important. I, as somebody who's been paid a, some, some total in my life of zero pounds, zero dollars, for giving healthcare to people, somebody who no one looks up to, really, or well, maybe a couple of people do, but I'm not like, you know, famous or well respected in any kind of community anywhere, really, for being a health expert. Uh, I know all this stuff because I've been studying it for years. I don't even have children and I know this stuff. I've studied it because I, w I know how corrupt these organizations are and I know the massive gap of unconsciousness that sits in these people where knowledge should sit. And it's a disgusting facade that is being held up to the world as healthcare, uh, when really it's just basically box ticking and policy following. 
So if I and many other people who have studied this stuff know that, why doesn't she know that? Thinking about specifics that are are very detailed. And, are, the, and, are the details important? I mean, you, you said that... Not in this case, because we're talking about a metal. So she says... Basically, she's trying to say that the details of the fact that he's raising an issue about metal are not important in this case because it's a metal. Really? So metals aren't important. Okay, that's an interesting assertion. And the look on her face as if to say, what are you, an idiot? Why is metal important? Hmm, okay, disturbing. It is not concerning to me because the amount of aluminum that we ingest in general, just through our diet, is much higher than what we get through vaccines. It's like an empty shell of a person, like t totally crestfallen, like she knows that she's never really thought this through very well. And she's like, oh, I've been riding on a crest of ego and bullshit, and now I'm being called on it. Oops. There is no reason to believe that that amount, that additional small amount, is anything to be concerned about. So she's basically saying that the amount that you eat in your diet on average of aluminium is dramatically higher or significantly higher than the amount of uh, aluminium that's present in a vaccine. Well, obviously anybody with basic logic can ascertain that eating food is not the same as injecting food into your bloodstream. Your body has obviously various processes in place to make sure that the food you eat gets processed appropriately before it enters the, its constituents into your bloodstream. Uh, and he basically highlights this in his own way. So you said that the quantity of ingested aluminum is small, or excuse me, is, is much larger than the amount of injected aluminum, and therefore you deem it safe? Correct. Okay. Are you aware that the, uh, the FDA provides that in terms of inge ingested aluminum, eaten aluminum, 0.3% or less is actually taken up by the blood? So he says, the government's own data basically says 0.3% of the aluminium that you eat through your diet, on average, will end up in your blood. Do you know that or not? I, yes or no? I, I don't know the exact okay. numbers. No. And that if it is, it's taken up in ionic form. Do you understand what I mean? I understand that? what you mean by I mean, that. It's, in its smallest elemental form, that's how it's taken into the blood, right? Correct. Okay. And, and aluminum in ionic form is not able to cross the blood-brain barrier, correct? I am not aware that that's true. You don't know? I don't know that that's true. Okay. If you don't know, that's fine. And antigens bound to aluminum are taken up by macrophages, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And macrophages present the stuff they gobble up to the parts of the immune system that create antibodies, correct? I believe so. I don't. Travel. I have not studied the actual mechanism of action. And they also travel to different parts of the body, including correct. the brain. Correct. Correct. And they'll deposit the materials they gobble up there. Isn't it true that most packaged inserts? So he's basically highlighting the way the immune system can absorb material and distribute it through the body, in for various reasons, in various ways. Especially, although he doesn't spell it out in this video. Uh, basically heavy metals, which is why we can have heavy metal detoxes, because heavy metals are difficult for the body's process. They tend to get lodged in tissues and so on and cause problems. For most vaccines, report um, uh, encephalitis or encephalopathy as a reported adverse event from vaccination. I would have to look at all the package inserts to be able to say yes or no to that. So he's asking her, does she know that vaccine package inserts uh, warn people that they could, the, the recipient could end up with encephalitis and actually numerous other serious diseases and illnesses as a result of the vaccine? And this is true. I've seen some, some of the many packages um, I actually used to work for one of the big corporations that produce vaccines. And, you know, part of my job actually was working with the leaflets and things. Um, it's endless, the amount of things that most of these products uh, try to put into the disclaimers saying, oh, you, you, can, you know, you could basically you could die. Every every bad thing in the world could happen if you use this drug. But sure, go use, go ahead and use this drug. It's perfect. It's great for you. Um, so she's basically saying, well, no, I'm not really aware of the very serious diseases that can be caused by vaccines. It is possible. Yes, it's possible. Could be. Maybe. Do any of the vaccines in the childhood cell contain monkey kidney cells? I do not know. Blood serum from cows. I do not know. Guinea pig cell cultures? 
I do not know. Gelatin from pigs and cows? I don't know. MRC5 human diploid cells? MRC5 human diploid cells. Those are specifics that I typically do are not. You, are you aware that MRC5 diploid cells are cells cultured from the lung tissue in a board of fetus? I am aware that there are two vaccines out on the market, the MMR and the VZV, that have um, that use a cell in the production of it, use a cell line um, from aborted fetuses from 1962 and 1966. Those are the only two aborted fetus tissue cell lines that are used. Um, uh, isn't it true that there actually has recently been a new cell line, human cell line from aborted fetal tissue that's been approved for use in vaccines? I'm not aware of that. Okay. And none of those, none of the aborted for fetal tissue culture cell lines actually end up in the vaccine product? The vaccine doesn't have cells in it. The cellular pieces from the aborted fetal That is potentially do, possible, yes. Okay. Isn't it true that in fact there is more of that cellular debris in the MMR, for example, and there is actually antigen? I don't know. Okay. Isn't it true that, um, that the uh, Havrix Hepatitis A vaccine, the hepatitis A vaccine contains millions of fragments of human DNA. Possible? I don't know. Doctor, isn't it true that Varivax, the chicken pox vaccine, contains approximately one trillion fragments of human DNA? Again, if Dr. Plotkin says it does, then I will agree. Isn't it true that these 74 aborted fetuses had almost every piece of their bodies, including skin, tongue, and heart, cut into little cubes to be used for culture? I'm not aware of any studies that Dr. Plotkin, the specifics of any studies that Dr. Plotkin did. What principles and methods did you rely upon in reaching your opinion regarding vaccine safety? I used the, again, the recommendations of the CDC and the American, uh, the um, Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices and the American Academy of Pediatrics to make, form an opinion about the vaccine safety. So your basis, so I'm saying the principal methods that you relied upon of reaching your opinion regarding vaccine safety and vaccine efficacy are what the CDC So let's just wheel back a little bit to this thing that pops up on the screen, this message. He's basically saying to her, where do you get your information from that you use as the basis to, from which to act, basically? When you tell people that your policies and your actions are, are science and evidence based and that they're the, you know basically the best we've got and you should trust them, he's saying, well, wh what do you base that on? And she says, well, these professional organizations, CDC and so on, they tell me things and I, and I say, yes, they're right, because I trust those organizations. That's all she has. She's not looked into any of this stuff at all. Um, she's just basically said, or like followed a hierarchy, the authoritarian bootlicking approach. Uh, yeah, I can't think for myself, so I'm just going to trust these people and get paid. Thank you very much. Um, and what it says on this screen here, obviously you can see, CDC uses safety and efficacy studies provided by the manufacturer of vaccines, not independent studies without conflict of interest. So basically, she's saying that in a roundabout way, the reason she knows that the vaccines are safe and effective is because of studies provided by the vaccine manufacturers. And that's it. And she hasn't looked at them, and she doesn't know how the science works. Hmm. I think most people with even the most basic ability to think can see that there's a problem here. And vaccine efficacy are what the CDC recommends, and, and your claim that you've seen some people die of some diseases that for which there are vaccinations. Is that correct? Correct. That's the sum total. So she's saying, I've seen people die and be ill because of diseases which I could give them vaccines for, and I'm told by the people that make the vaccines that the vaccines are a good thing, so therefore I recommend vaccines, and I don't know, really know any of the details. So basically, she's really nothing more. She's This head of this organisation for childcare has basically admitted that she is really at this point little more than um, a secretary, let's say, in the pharmaceutical marketing division of large corporations. Right. And the American Academy of... The American Academy of Pediatrics is a professional association which solicits donations from pharmaceutical companies. And I, people that follow my blogs and videos will have seen, I've posted many times, solid evidence from whistleblowers and so on, the extent of, that show the extent of the 
wild sometimes amount of money that these pharmaceutical companies will pay to doctors to try to get them to use their drugs. Um, there was one rep saying that they literally used to send male doctors to strip clubs, holidays to the Caribbean, you name it, to make a profit. Um, isn't it true that the only polio vaccine used in the United States is an activated polio vaccine, which is injected in muscle? It's an inactivated polio virus vaccine. Right, and it's injected in muscle tissue. Correct. Okay. Versus what we used to be used as an Actually, oil. it's not into the muscle tissue. It's given sub-Q, typically. So there we go. You know, very interesting video, especially if you're into health and science and vaccination information. Um, you know, obviously she's not a complete idiot. She knows certain things. But the important point is that she's the head of this organization and some of the absolutely key important factors about the mechanisms of, of how vaccines work, generally speaking, and the risks involved and obviously the knock-on effects that could be caused through vaccines and the implications of that. She has absolutely no understanding of whatsoever. And I and many other people who have taken it upon ourselves to study this stuff know quite well about these these pieces of information and uh yeah i find that alarming to be honest with you this should be there's no question she should know about the kind of things that, that he's pointing out there uh and in my opinion most people should understand this stuff at this point so when we come back to here and we we just sort of see well that's the video that facebook won't let me share you can see that there's no statement i mean i personally said in my comment here facebook refused well i added this later they they, they refused to let me share this to groups please share it. These, the, my original message was, these are the medical professionals who claim they're guided by the science when advocating for your children to be injected with pharmaceutical crap and shame you if you refuse. There is no scientific understanding backing this leader. Now, you could debate that. You could say she does have some scientific understanding. But what I was really meaning is the basic logical process that she goes through when justifying uh, the use of vaccines does not really she does not have the scientific understanding necessary to establish whether the logic she's using is accurate or not she's just admitted that so what i've stated here is not really untrue and i think most people would get where i was coming from and it's not really even meant to be abusive it's just frustrated so and i'm definitely not saying here um anything specific about vaccines other than i'm saying i'm calling that some of the stuff they inject crap which I think most people would agree that aborted fetal cells, um, aluminium, uh, iterants or ver variants of mercury and other things that they've used over the years probably shouldn't be in your bloodstream. You know, there's a reason why your body wouldn't allow that in there ordinarily and why you don't eat this stuff. Um, so, yeah, at least in the way that it is in the vaccines. There's a reason why it has to be injected because it won't be in there otherwise, right? So, uh, naturally speaking, that would not be in there. And I don't would never take back that phrase saying that that's pharmaceutical crap because to me it is. Uh, from the body's perspective. Uh, hence, you have a massive immune response to when they put these adjuvants into your body because your body doesn't want that stuff in there. Um, so if you like, when I say it's crap, I'm talking from the perspective of my own immune system. It's my white cells and the rest of my immune system speaking through me and calling it crap. Get it out. Um, so yeah, apparently Facebook doesn't want to allow me to share that with anyone else. You know, you can't know that through Facebook, basically. Facebook determines for you that this information is not appropriate for you to hear. So uh, it would be great if you found this information useful. Please do go and research this a bit more and you can check out some of the links on eureka.org. And uh, there's a catalyst in there, which I'll link in the video under this. It's got a ton of information there about vaccines. Lots of different qualified people talking about the subject. And uh, generally speaking, the aim is not to 100% say vaccines are a bad thing. The aim is simply to look at and share information that is not in the mainstream and that gets shut down in cases like this. You only have to try and share information on some of this stuff and you'll find how quickly uh, you can't share it. And that's not right. You know, that's not how free speech works. And it definitely isn't how science works. If people think that the scientific process involves not being able to talk about certain elements of science, then they don't understand the scientific process. So being as this is Mark Zuckerberg's uh, website, and he's very pro-vaccine, and he seems to think that stopping people talking about vaccines uh, is something to do with science, then that would suggest he does not understand science or health and has no place talking about vaccines or advocating anything and deciding you know, who should or shouldn't have access to information or make certain decisions about their own body, etc. So the only real reason I'm on Facebook at this point, again, is because there's so many people on there and I can reach a lot of people, and they're trying to stop me doing that, obviously, but... I'm doing everything I can to move people away from Facebook, so please do go and check out um, the Hive blockchain. Hive.io uh, is the info site, and um, PeakD, P E A K K D.com is probably one of the best general uh, interfaces for that 
system is actually a blockchain. It's a cryptocurrency. It's uncensored, pretty much social network, and you get paid uh, for posting. And as it happens, the price of the the Hive tokens has gone up by nearly four hundred percent in the last forty eight hours. It's really skyrocketing. So you'll be able to get paid some pretty good money at the moment just for posting on there. Um, you can also check out Eureka.org, my site, uh, which is a, an also pretty much uncensored social network, uh, focusing on healing, balancing, and evolving. And currently, it integrates the Steam blockchain without getting too technical. That's the pre, the early version, the earlier version of the Hive blockchain. And at some point, I will switch over from Steam to Hive. So it will become a Hive website, and you'll be able to get paid with Hive tokens for posting on Eureka. At the moment, you can get paid in Steam tokens. That's a whole other story. It got taken over with a hostile takeover. I haven't got around to updating it yet because of the lockdown with COVID-19. And it's keeping me very busy. I haven't had time to do that. But um, yeah, please do check it out. There's a ton of information. You don't even have to sign up. You can just use it as a research tool in a library if you like. Um, but please do share this video on and make people aware of what's happening with uh, Facebook, what's happening with vaccine science, what's happening with the lives of children and adults being given this information from these people who do not understand what they're talking about um, sufficiently to know that what they're saying is correct and that they're making the best decision. And if anything, if nothing else, please do your own due diligence research and actually take some time to study these things yourself. It's not impossible for people to understand this. There are good teachers out there, good professors, good doctors whose job it is to teach people. The word doctor historically means teacher. So a good doctor is a good teacher and there are plenty out there happy to teach on these subjects on the internet. And there are plenty who will tell you all day long that the official policies of the CDC and all these different governmental organisations are deeply flawed. Um, they don't respect them. And, you know, I'm suggesting you listen to these people before you make your mind up. That's all I'm saying. So as always, thanks for listening. And as I said, please do give us a thumbs up, uh, subscribe if you're new and share this along. And until next time, peace.